ICON, internationale Zeitschrift für Fotografie und Medienkunst. We are here in the 15th arrondissement of Paris, in the studio of Ero. And Ero, thank you for taking your time speaking with us about you and your work. First of all, uh, you were born as Gudmundur Gudmundsson. Gudmundur yes. Gudmundsson. <laughs> okay. Thanks. How did you become Ero? Why and when did you change your name? Was it like coming out, the coming I out was, of I was, I, 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 I did a wonderful trip with her. I was mm -hmm. in, the, in the academy. Uh, of Bosar of mm -hmm. uh, of Oslo, ah, and we okay. did a wonderful trip to south of south of Spain, mm -hmm. and we stayed in a small village called Castel del Ferro. Yes. So I got the idea. I said, "Good, this would be a very good idea to use this name." So so I started calling myself Ferro, <laughs> Ferro. Right. Uh, then I had a lawsuit by a uh, Argentinian, but he was already. Mm -hmm. uh, France nationality uh, of having the same name. He was also a painter. I, I would say a lousy painter, a lousy <laughs> painter. But the same name. He was painting <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit like Utrillo. Okay. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> this was, uh, he, he I, somebody gave me a very bad lawyer with a great name, mm -hmm. Camille de la Forterie. I got a very good name, but, but he, he he, he lost the first two times. <laughs> and then the third time, the, the lawyer of my adv adviser, yes. he said to me, why don't you drop the F? <laughs> so I say, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, also, in, in Ferro, in Icelandic means the peace goes away, mm -hmm. and Ero, is, now it's quiet. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. So, perfect name. <laughs> uh, in architecture, one speaks about signature works. Works which, in a way, incorporates the central idea and the attitude of the architect. Important works of the architect. Could you maybe name three of your signature works? Works you think which are really important in your whole oeuvre? But the important thing is to... Uh, I have the impression that I've followed uh, everything which has been going on, mm -hmm. everything from Sarajevo yes. to the NASA mm -hmm. and all the big, uh, uh, for the last 50 years, I think I've followed, more or less, I've followed everything which has been going on, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the testimony of the century. Right. Uh, Political and social events. Yes. Changing attitudes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. But is there one work, if you only would have made one work, which work would that be? The, 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 the painting which was shown in the Louvre yes. now, lately, mm -hmm. is the foodscape. Yeah. Who belongs to the, the, the modern museum in mm -hmm. Stockholm. Mm -hmm. huh? It is two or three meters, mm -hmm. and it was shown in the Louvre. I was very happy, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, this, is, this is the painting which kind of... Uh, Incorporates. Uh, it's... Uh, I did the, the collage I made yeah. in New York. Yeah. I lived a lo long time in New York. I lived, I had a very beautiful American wife. Mm -hmm. I, I, and so we, she worked in New York. She was a model mm -hmm. and she, she worked in New York, half in New York and mm -hmm. half in Paris. Uh, so uh, so that work? I, I, sp I spent a lot of time in New York mm -hmm. at that time. I, time and I will come back to New York. I will ask you questions about New York. Yes, yes. So that work, uh, you did that work during your stay in New York. I did the yeah. collage yeah. in New York and I painted it in Paris. Ah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, uh, very impressed when I came to America when I see the supermarkets. Yes. The supermarkets, mm -hmm. I saw all this food. Mm -hmm. I went and it made me a big impression. Mm -hmm. So this painting came out from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, does it also describe a, a political situation in the United States, the painting? Or it's more about consumerism? Uh, interesting thing, there, there was a gallery, mm -hmm. it was called O.K. Harris. Mm -hmm. The owner was named Ivan Karp. Mm -hmm. They made the paintings of 24 Paintings of Mao Zedong. Mm -hmm. I did. I did his uh, <laughs> his world trip. 
because yeah. Mao Zedong, he never traveled anywhere. Mm -hmm. He went to Moscow when he was 29 years old, mm -hmm. had no money, had to work. They put him to, to clean a bookshop mm -hmm. to give him to eat. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, we, had, we, we, showed, we showed 24 paintings and we sold 19 paintings before the wow. opening wow. of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. you know? So that, that those, was, uh, those, this is the series where Mao Zedong is in New York, in Moscow, in Venice. Exactly. So, so you made him traveling. I can give you. I have. Yeah. I still have some books. Yeah. About this. About this. Great. About this travel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how do you work? How do you come from the first idea to the final work? Is there a detailed plan, or is there also coincidence? Because you once said, you once said, uh, you marry the collages together, yes. and you like surprise. The, the collages are the beginning, mm -hmm. beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, we, are, we just opened an exhibition mm -hmm. in Geneva of, of uh, the two years of collages. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I probably have made about 30,000 collages. Mm -hmm. I know that I have made uh, uh, 17,000 paintings because I have a you have, you have a catalog? catalog a list? Wow. I have eight, eight catalogs, <laughs> and so I know exactly how many I have made, and, uh, and uh, it is very practical for, for, for sales and mm -hmm. for so on. Right. You know. But how does it start? You have a certain idea, you collect things, and then it starts with an idea, and you know exactly what, something what will be the result? The, in the world. Something happens in yeah. the world. The NASA, mm -hmm. certainly the NASA happened. Right. I, I, uh, there was actually called six artists and six towns. Mm -hmm. The first stop was Houston. Mm -hmm. I had started this area already. Yeah. So I said, okay, I, I, go, to, I go to Houston. Mm -hmm. So, go to Houston. And there was a, a, a scientific uh, attaché there mm -hmm. because of the NASA. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, nobody can go into the NASA. Nobody can get into NASA. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Then there's an opening of the exhibition, and a small Japanese lady comes to me and says, I'm, uh, I studied with your friends in, in Paris, with Branson and, and Heiter, I studied with your friends, and uh, uh, I, I am a teacher of the Inner Lake University, and I'm teaching engravings. And mm -hmm. in my class, I have two wives of cosmonauts, and I have one cosmonaut in my class. Okay. So she, I gave mm -hmm. her my telephone in the hotel, mm -hmm. the hotel room and all that. Next morning, at seven o'clock in the morning, the phone rings mm -hmm. and somebody says, we are waiting for you. <laughs> I say, who are you? We are the NASA. <laughs> so how do I get? I say, you just, just hotel will get, get you a taxi and you come, come with the taxi. So I went straight to the NASA and they stayed there for one week. Wow. Yes. So coincidence. They took me everywhere. Yeah, and encounters are important. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Your work seems to be very consistent. I mean, there is a clear and recognizable handwriting. Now, if you see a work you would in, of yours, you would immediately know it's an error. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but still, uh, were there some milestones, some changes, important changes for you during your whole career? Where you said where you yes. started something really new. I think that the, mm -hmm. the really new for me was when I started the, the scape, mm -hmm. the scape mm -hmm. paintings. Uh, yeah, it mm -hmm. was the, the birdscape, right. the fishscape, the mm -hmm. carscape. Mm -hmm. There are about uh, about twenty different scapes. Mm -hmm. They're all the same size. They're all three meters or two meters high, and uh, and uh, this this was uh, this was. Uh, just by accident. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, lot of, I get, I tell you, I get a lot of material sent yeah. in by friends. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I don't know who, even who sends it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, when I travel, I I collect. So you are not only a painter; you are also a collector. Or do do you only use it for your paintings? I have. I have. Uh, uh, what not you collect? collect, I have changed mm -hmm. paintings mm -hmm. with friends. Mm -hmm. And then I've given it normally to the museum in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, a Chilean painter called 
Roberto Mata. Robert, you even worked with him, Roberto no? Roberto Mata, yeah. Did some... And he, he, he asked me to come to his place mm -hmm. every Friday evening mm -hmm. at five o'clock and we would draw together. This was in the late together. 50s, early 60s in exactly, Paris. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we did uh, uh, 20, 20 drawings, probably. Fantastic. Yeah. And he uh, lived there, was living quite close to where I lived at mm -hmm. the time. You studied engraving, fresco and painting in Oslo, Academy of Oslo, no? Yeah. And then you went to Italy and studied classical art. And sometimes I think your collages reminds me of mosaic. Even Archimboldo comes to my mind, uh -huh. this putting together of things, no? Uh, but let's put it another way. How important is art history for your work? If I, if, if I, if I want to make a, a selection, mm -hmm. uh, then there is no doubt that uh, the Scuola Zarocco mm -hmm. in Venice yes. with Tintoretto mm -hmm. would be the first. Mm -hmm. Then I would put an American friend, mm -hmm. he was a good friend, uh, Rosenquist. Yeah. Rosenquist. You met him personally in New York, no? Even yeah. more, he was a friend exactly, in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, we did the Rosenquist, we did an interview for, for the New York Times, mm -hmm. and, and then he, 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 disappeared, he disappeared a few days later. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. he's a, a great artist, a great mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm very, cl very classical in my ideas and in my uh, mm -hmm. beliefs, mm -hmm. huh? and uh, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you work with the collages, but still, you are a painter, so you still love painting. I mean, painting is what your heart beats for, no? Yes. Yeah. Because you you also did you also worked with a f with a filmmaker in the fifties and sixties. You uh, participated, I think, even in performances, but you stayed with painting. You never expanded to sculpture, I, I to performance, to film. I did a movie which is a two right. two hours long, mm -hmm. uh, which is the gr grimace mm -hmm. of the artist, <laughs> and uh, I have two hundred artists. Yeah, yeah, and then a friend of mine, the friend, he made a sound mm -hmm. for the for for the grimace made or the, the name of the artist. You know, yeah, that was the masks you made yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah for I, I made about. No, 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 decent, decent film uh, mm -hmm. at that time, you know, one called The Stars, mm -hmm. was The Stars of Hollywood, you know. I found a suitcase in the f flea market mm -hmm. full of photos of stars of, from Hollywood <laughs> in the 30s, <laughs> so it became a film. Uh, this was in the time you were in Paris, but you arrived in Paris in 1958, no? Was it the dream city, still the dream city for the artists? Why did you go to Paris? And maybe even more, what did inspire you in Paris? And who inspired you? I tell you, in Paris. Mm -hmm. When I arrived to Paris, it was the school of Paris. Right. Everything was abstract. Everything abstract. Everything. Maybe Reberol was the only one mm -hmm. kind of figurative. Mm -hmm. But every, it was extremely difficult. Difficult. So all the galleries full of abstract art mm -hmm. everywhere, which I appreciate, okay? So what? The Italians saved my life. Uh, right. Carlo Cardazzo yeah. found us, I don't know how he found us. Mm -hmm. He said, are you going to the Biennale Venice? I said, he said uh, I was in Iceland. My wife said, yes, yes, yes. He said, bring, bring over four big paintings. We mm -hmm. said it. He paid me immediately. Wow. Then I... I then another man I worked with, I had a contract, he gave me a small contract for years, was Arturo Schwarz. Arturo Schwarz, yeah. yeah. Arturo Famous Schwarz. Arturo Schwarz. Extremely yeah. important, interesting mm -hmm. man. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, so in the beginning, you were an outsider in Paris. Yeah. It was difficult. Yeah. Yeah? Because so this I... Was, I, this, I is, this is the... This, I would really say that the Italian saved, saved, saved my life. You know, because really. I read a, a story about you when you uh, went to Kahnweiler, the gallerist of Picasso, yes. and Kahnweiler was not happy to see you, is that right? I have never met any assholes 
in my <laughs> life. <laughs> he, he started <laughs> all this horrible Nordic art. Edward Munch, the worst painter in the world. This is a shit. He said, I was a poor little guy, you know, with my six paintings. <laughs> came with the, came with the, came with the, with the metro, God. came with the metro, and then he treated me like a, like a, like a, like a pig. Oh, God. <laughs> so a very bad experience. But there was a person who was important for you. Uh, you met everyone here, I think. Yeah. All the, uh, also, also the old avant garde uh, were people you met in, 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 in Paris. Max Ernst, Dujon, Masson. Yeah. And also Wilfredo this, Lam, you were speaking about Mata, a friend. Exactly. This, but, was, this was very much because of, in Florence, when mm -hmm. I was in Florence, I met Jean-Jacques Lebel. That's what I was going to ask yes, you. Yes. He and was Lebel, an important Lebel. man for you, no? Yeah, Jean-Jacques Lebel. Lebel. And uh, Robert was the biggest expert mm -hmm. in, in paintings at the time. Mm -hmm. And he uh, introduced me to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. the, all, all these wonderful people. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you said before the Paris art world was dominated by abstraction, no? Gestural and geometric abstraction. And you uh, were deeply opposed to it. Your work was different. You were, for them, figurative. And uh, you even criticized the art world and the art system. There is some works like Painter Under Control, Death of the Collector. Uh, so, and you even said, apropos styles, you once said, I like to murder them. <laughs> so, um, but I have, you see, I, 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 yeah. I was not sure that painting mm -hmm. would work. Mm -hmm. So I went to Ravenna yeah. and I learned the, the mosaic, mm -hmm. yeah. the mosaic. Yeah. Yeah. I learned the mosaic. I thought I could, I could survive making big mosaics, which I did in Iceland in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the professional school. I did two big walls there, mm -hmm. which is still not one stone fall out. You know, yeah. the Icelandic marble, which I found. And um, it was interesting, everything, you know. I've been very lucky, of course, extremely lucky. But did you like this idea that they always compared you with the surrealists? Then they compared you uh, uh, with Dada. They compared you even, they called it narrative figuration. That's okay. <laughs> Was this okay for you? Perfect. Because you, you, in a way, you have perfect. a very unique perfect. position. Perfect for me. Perfect. That was perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, your way of looking at the world is the collage, you know? and uh, a mirror of chaos and millions of perspectives. You even said once it's like a radio program, yeah. uh, your work. Uh, but still, is it a more optimistic look? A joyful look at the world, or is it a more skeptical, pessimistic, critical look? Are you a misanthrope or a philanthrope? This is all, uh, <laughs> all together. All together. <laughs> and there is a lot of humor in it. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> uh, especially when, when, when I look at the women, how you present women. They are often very strong, no? even sexually aggressive. There is this work, Amazons, the Red Sonia Saga. What's your image of, so females, you females are strong and attractive and aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, very admirative mm -hmm. to uh, beautiful woman. After Paris, you went to New York uh, and you were, you were working and living in New York. Whom did you meet in New York? Who inspired you? You were speaking about Rosenquist as an example, but, uh, but I found an interview where you said, America, my paintings have changed a lot in America. Uh, so what was the reason of that change? Was that the American way of life? The consumerism uh, you met? Yes, and the, 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 the shops, mm -hmm. uh, the shops and uh, uh, I had a very good friend who was already stalled there since a few years mm -hmm. called Erwin Falström. Falström, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Erwin Falström. And Erwin Falström, he, he, uh, he introduced me to, to everybody, to Jim mm -hmm. Dine, to the old, all the big artists at right. the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a lady which I liked very much, uh, Carrie Schneemann. Schneemann, yeah. Carole also Schneemann. famous artist, I performance made, artist. I made, yeah. I made uh, 24 photos of her naked right. uh, with snakes and all that, you mm -hmm. know. And I know that most of us, they have all these photos 
in, in the museum in Vienna. They have, yeah. they have the whole collection, whole collection. Mm -hmm. Did you also use it for your paintings? Huh? Did you also use them for your paintings? Is she not, on your no, paintings? Not at all. Not no, at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. Found a quote of yours, uh, which, which you said um, in the context of your first exhibition at the gallery in Paris, February, February 1960, and you said, "My paintings challenge. My painting challenges the world. Its absurdity, its savagery, even its reality. All dogmas and official rights leave me cold. My independence is alien." is alienable. Would you still say this or would you add something to it? I was lucky. Mm -hmm. The next next door mm -hmm. was another gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, they opened an important uh, surrealist exhibition. Mm -hmm. I remember at the opening there was a naked woman and there were chocolates all yeah. over her right. to cover. And people came for the opening where uh, they could take the sugar <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 so um, you would still say my independence is alienable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> this is not exactly my words. I think this is. I don't know, this was invented my, <laughs> for my wife at the time. I'd say, you know. um, but on the other hand, you are often called a pop artist. Yes. Would you agree to that? No. Okay. After C. Danto. Yeah. The C. Danto, American, yeah. The, the American critic, famous critic. He calls me a Baroque pop. Yeah. Baroque that's, pop. That's more precise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pop Baroque. Mm -hmm. Pop Baroque. Yeah. But, uh, your work is very political. I mean, there is all these guys, Mao, Stalin, Churchill, uh, Hitler, even Hitler, and there is a lot of political events incorporated in your work. Would you self call, would you call yourself a political artist? Follow the, what goes on in the world. Mm -hmm. huh? And I think we have s spoken too much about Hitler, mm -hmm. <laughs> about many other, and, uh, Dictators and uh, what has happened in Russia lately <coughs> shows that it is not finished. Huh? Mm -hmm. That continues as dictatorships. So you think you're more a commentator? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm a, a, like a reportage. Mm -hmm. It's like a mm -hmm. following mm -hmm. because uh, time goes, mm -hmm. and then then we then we see the subject again. Mm -hmm. That's all over again, quite similar. So like kaleidoscopes exactly. of uh, what happens in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, some critics say that your work, this explosion of images, this uh, incredible pluralistic information which is in the work, anticipates the age of internet and Google globalization. Do you feel like a pioneer? No. Mm -hmm. Just like a normal, 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 <laughs> normal painter. painter. Yes, <laughs> normal painter. Mm -hmm. huh? Following uh, well, the, the century he's living mm -hmm. in. You mm -hmm. know. Is there an exhibition you are really proud of? An exhibition which was extremely that, one impo important of, for you? I spoke before yeah? was uh, the one in New York with the O.K. Harris. Yeah. With the Chinese, mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with the Mao paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because he sold everything, right. but it was very important. The, the, the reception was very important. I can imagine. I mean, to present Mao was, in New York at that time exactly. wasn't so easy, no? Exactly. Yeah. Which year was that? 60... Yeah, something. 60, 63, 4, something four, like this, so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and what's about your big retrospective in Centre Pompidou? Yes. This was in 2010, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we got, how many visitors we got? I don't know. Almost 300,000 for the Collage exhibition. Mm -hmm. It was not a painting exhibition mm -hmm. in the Pompidou. Mm -hmm. It was a Collage exhibition. Only I, I, and mm -hmm. then I gave, I gave the, the French state, I gave them 100 collages. Mm -hmm. you know, to thank but you were always an artist people liked. People came to your exhibitions.
Yeah, you were you, no, you, nobody understood. You were popular. No? <laughs> nobody understood mm-hmm. what happened, you know, that they got the same amount of people came as living in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your story is a story of success, but were there also big disappointments? Is there a big disappointment in your life? Yeah, I said, disappointment. Yeah, yeah, because your story is a story of success. Is there also a big disappointment? Something you wanted and didn't get as an artist? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. No, nothing at all. I'm, I'm happy about everything. Huh? Fantastic. This is a good, uh, I have a, I have a, normally I have a good nature, I've been told. <laughs> and uh, I am, uh, it's, I've been floating through the whole thing uh, for these years, floating through like, 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 uh, like 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 a, like a bird. No. This is a wonderful end of our talk. Thank you, Ero, for this wonderful talk. Thanks. Okay. ICON ist eine internationale Zeitschrift für Fotografie und Medienkunst, die seit 1991 vierteljährlich erscheint. Ich freue mich sehr auf die neue Kooperation mit dem Art Institute Werner und dass wir dank dieser mit R9 nun auch im Fernsehen zu sehen sind. Jedes Heft auch ein individuelles Themenheft mit der Rubrik im Fokus, wo wir internationale Kuratorinnen und Kuratoren, Expertinnen und Experten einladen, auf aktuelle kulturpolitische Geschehen einzugehen. Ja, und ich darf Sie einmal im Monat, am letzten Sonntag des Monats, bei Kunst Smart bei ICON herzlich begrüßen. Im Übrigen sind wir auch auf der Homepage des Art Institut Vienna zu sehen.